hoc committee regular meeting for tuesday june 18th can i have a roll call please yes member busio present member cole present member hans present member richer is absent member twitchell present and chair renner here great we have quorum okay Next up on the agenda is a consideration of the April 16th, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Are there any comments or feedback edits? We did receive some edits from member Twishel, which we will um, okay. make uh, nothing too substantial, just no. mostly just a typo. Yeah. Okay. All right, then hearing that, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. So moved and second. <laughs> Okay. Great. <laughs> um, roll call or all in favor? All in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, at this point, we have the non agenda items from visitors. We don't have anyone in the audience tonight, so we can move on to the general business. Is there anyone online? There's not. No. Okay. Uh, I can start off if you want and okay. go through. Yeah. So um, you previously had sent, uh, seen a, uh, the first draft of the outdoor lighting ordinance. Um, we um, um, started to incorporate some of the comments from our consultants. Uh, we had uh, a meeting uh, to, uh, to kind of go through some of those. Some of those we left out or we wanted left to discussion. But we were able to get through and, and um, thanks to village staff, pick up um, most of the general comments. Um, I think there's just a few things we need to go through, plus any um, uh, open items uh, that are left you see on the red. There's some things to discuss, but also to get your comments tonight. Um, I don't think we're, we're looking to make this the final final. We're just going to have a series of discussions, and if we need to do more research. There was also uh, a discussion um, that when we got this to kind of close to final, whether we would have one more review by the lighting consultant, but um, he had provided significant input at this point. Great. Good. Yeah, is there anything else I'm missing? No, I think that's great. Um, however, you will kind of want to run it if you want to go sort of section by section or if you want to focus on certain things. Um, what do you what do you think would be best? Um, I don't know. Should we go through this, or do you have, guys already have specific comments you want to jump into, or we'll talk about what we kind of the big issues? I've got I a few specific, comments. Yeah, I yeah. do too. Okay. Specific comments. So. Okay. Why don't we just go page by page? Okay. Hmm. All right. Um, we had uh, and feel free to jump in here. We had the purpose. Section uh, 10, the first, uh, first section on purpose, um, basically the objectives, and then um, uh, the, um, the minimize light pollution, glare, protect residents from unwanted light, uh, provide adequate light for safety and security, and that's a, you know, an issue that's been brought up by some of the residents, and uh, we can talk about that in a little bit. Um, incorporate a responsible lighting into all new construction projects, uh, promote cost-effective lighting to conserve energy, uh, encourage preservation to the greatest practical extent of natural nighttime darkness, um, encourage uh, quality outdoor lighting and prevent inappropriate poorly designed or installed outdoor lighting, uh, recognize that there are certain holidays and special events that will have unique lighting needs. We don't want to curtail celebrations. I like that lighting needs. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then uh, follow the IAS and Dark Sky International's five principles for responsible outdoor lighting, which I think is great to have. That mm -hmm. should be useful and have a clear purpose. Um, uh, there's some discussion here about you know whether replacing or installing light, whether it's really needed, that it's targeted to where it needs to go, uh, that it has a light level, which is um, no higher than is absolutely necessary. Use the lowest light level required. That's controlled. That's a big issue that we discuss. Lighting controls. The state of Illinois um, does have an, an, an. We discuss this in Illinois Energy Code, um, and that Energy Code uh, prescribes lighting controls for um, primarily for commercial, not necessarily new residential. But there are uh, protocols there for how to control light, um, and then uh, using the proper uh, warm colored lights wherever possible. 
Um, there was a discussion with the consultant on the specific wavelengths and color temperatures that we needed to do to avoid affecting um, uh, nighttime uh, animals and insects. So that was the first section. Is there any comments on, on this section in general? Uh, I, I just have one on the second bullet point. Okay. I think protect residents might be too strong of language okay. and, and provide opportunities for people to go after neighbors and whatnot sure. in terms of in the name of their protections. How about how about limit? I would say, yeah, limit unwanted light or reduce unwanted mm -hmm. light um, that would enter homes and businesses at night for residents, okay. something along those lines. Okay. I feel like Sounds protect good. gives neighbors the yeah, yeah. I agree. right to go after other neighbors. Yeah. Good point. Um, and then I, I, the other thought I had here is like, would we want to put, because we are the sustainability committee, maybe the more sustainable options up at the top of this bulleted list, as opposed to, you know, okay, reorganize the safety and security. Yeah. Just, okay. you know, the, while those are good point, while those are, you know, viable options, maybe leading with the more sustainable. Okay. Just to reorder. Yeah. Just a, yeah. Fine point. That's good. Good point. And then do we want, you referenced it, but do we want to talk about the colors that are best for wildlife? Because there's some very specific things we can it share. Does it does get into okay. that, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, thank you for those comments. The next section is definitions. I think this is uh, pretty straightforward um, to help people understand what the different terms mean. I, I don't think I need to read through this um, in any depth, but I want to see if anyone has any comments on if they were missing any definitions. Okay. Um, the next section is um, regulated activities, and this goes into you know the actual meat of the uh, ordinance uh, legal language. Um, it does uh, this section. We, it, we are doing um, a very wide ranging application here there are some places that only regulate lights in say commercial districts or in the city um, this is a wholesale approach to uh, both residential and non-residential areas within the village um, which i think is a very um, forward looking a lot of ordinances don't do that um, it talks about Connor, go ahead i have a question so um sort of building on a prior comment would it be useful sort of at the open to sort of not a mission statement, but like a purpose statement, like trying to emphasize dark sky characteristics, just sort of a why, why doing this, hmm. you know, just we want to be as dark sky compliant for, you know, just sort of like a little philosophical opening. Maybe, Maybe a, that's the purpose being a little more. Right, that it's about sustainability, that's about mission oriented yeah. respecting neighbors is, yeah. you know right. just, anyway sort of why because why is it coming out of the sustainability committee okay. it's just a thought so going maybe farther that would be than combating light pollution well just a sort of an opener like yeah a philosophical why statement. are we yeah. why is this coming into yeah it? yeah well what we could do is the the section a or even add a, between a and a b put in a, a philosophical sentence or two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing huge, but just sort of like why. Sure, why, okay. Why are we doing this? And then I didn't know if in definitions, and maybe it's not easily defined, but sort of dark sky protocol or philosophy or, yeah. um, or sort of what that means. But I don't know if that's. Well, I think, I think the, 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 these are the, 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 the consultant recommended these, these five principles from dark sky. Mm-hmm. Those are those are kind of their goals. No, I meant in the um, definitions. Like oh, what, the well, what, does what dark is dark sky mean? Like okay, yeah. Is, yeah. Okay, we could add the uh, dark sky, and then we can have a sentence. Like the that definition. This is, or right. yeah. Or yeah. Anyway, that was just. Okay. First, if someone's unfamiliar. Okay. Yeah, I like that with the purpose, like reducing energy consumption and conservation, and promoting mm -hmm. conservation. Okay. Seeing the night sky. <laughs> right. Community enhancement mm -hmm. <laughs> through better lighting, through, through uh, responsible lighting. Ah, responsible right. lighting, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Um, so we just uh, went through the, the regulations. Um, we also talked about um, 
and this was a, a subject that we discussed a lot. Uh, if, if an existing light is to be removed, re uh, or, uh, removed, replaced, moved, upgraded, or otherwise changed, it should be replaced with a non-conforming light luminaire. I think, um, obviously, if you're changing a light bulb and an outdoor light, I think that might be a little much. But mm -hmm. if you're actually replacing fixtures around your house, um, but there's also a section later on we're going to talk about um, when when this regulation will apply to existing homes. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, um, let's say that you were doing a $150,000 addition on your home. Right. You weren't replacing the outdoor lights. We need to discuss later on whether, whether there's a, th a threshold point where you know, a thousand a uh, thousand dollars in upgrades in the lights and the exterior lights of the home would be appropriate for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Bringing it up to code. So yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. And we do that at times for other systems. Mm -hmm. That way, we're not pr placing a retroactive burden on people who really aren't doing anything to their home, mm -hmm. but we include it where we can. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that later. I have a question under luminaire standards. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two other than residential categories there. Mm -hmm. Is there any other definition to those two zoning district definitions beyond that? They seem to have exterior. Well, risk. I know I'm looking at fully shielded. I'm wondering and if it other cut off shielded. something, if there was more. Oh, to, yeah. Like one was. Um, I see it. Small, I small than, commercial or something. I think the second one was other than maybe single family residential oh, or something okay. along those oh. lines. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Apartment complexes them. or something. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Just, okay. I, I need some clarity. On yeah, that. that's a good point. Do, um, in that, in those boxes, there, um, two thoughts. One is, it, could we do any translation of lumens to something that people could recognize? Um, lumens and foot candles are the two terms, and they're kind of used interchangeably. Right. But I mean, how does how does somebody, you know? measure if they are out of looking at their house how do they is there any kind of hmm. gauge they can use to when, say when, I'm, yeah. I'm in compliance or i'm out of compliance with the lumens when, when you buy a light fixture it'll have a lumen rating mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. lumens per watt mm -hmm. so yeah when you're buying the fixture you know what the maximum so output. you can add up all of your exterior lighting right and say am i over this Right. Okay. So I wonder right. if we put that in the definitions of lumen because yeah. we have sort of like the textbook definition of what a lumen is, but mm -hmm. we might need a layman's explanation of how that might be quantified by, yeah, say, it could be, yeah, just Joe say, Public trying to put yeah. lights on the outside of his house. For right. example, a porch light rating could be, you know, mm -hmm. 150 lumens, you know, so that would be part of your. 1400 you know and then if you add up all your exterior lumens which are advertised on the fixtures yeah and the light bulbs that you might be using right? yeah i mean we get yeah in the definition the luminous flux emitted within a solid unit angle one steridian by a point source having a uniform luminous intensity of one candela do you not know what that <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly you know like don't a, you love that though you need, i need a <laughs> physics degree to no figure that out after that that just says yeah purchased fixtures or whatever should include a lumen rating or just so you know yeah. look at the, the sta standard rating that you could look at and yeah look at all your fixtures and measure them again i remember when i was a young engineer in college and i was studying my physics course and i looked up the, de the definition of light what is light mm -hmm. and it said localized bundles of quanta because <laughs> <laughs> it's neither it's both well, a duh. particle and a wave yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's not uh, a particle or a wave right, right. <laughs> and then um, I've got just another comment on the residential maximum height above grade, 20 feet. Um, what's our maximum building height, Clara, do you know? Um, or, it depends or residential. on the residential. district, but it would be taller than that. Yeah. 24? Could, uh, I'd have to double check. Okay. This is feet? Like I said, it's different. Feet above depending. grade? Way above yeah. A lot of homes are way above. Yeah, that's that. 20. So I'm thinking basketball hoops 10 foot, so, you know, 20 is. is 20 but, like, are people high. putting lights on the top of their house? On the third story? That's a, well, that would be an exterior. issue. Exterior? Yeah. That's a motion. I would that's say a well, I have neighbors sensor. who have lights. High. Yeah. 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 And this leads into another comment that might come later, but um, <laughs> I have a particular issue with people that are stringing lights up mm. in their trees. Mm. 
shining down on their whole yard and stuff. And they may be 20 feet, but huh. when you when when you look up at the sky, and I want to look at a dark sky, I have to look from the ground that I'm five foot eight. <laughs> so 20 feet is spreading light in a pretty wide arc by the time it hits the ground. And so I have to look through that dust. Is that decoration or is that safety? Both. It's both. Both. I don't know. I, I mean, that you bring up a good point, though. Are these? Is this feet above grade? Is this mounted? It's mounted. Yeah, on a I tree. don't mount. On no, I, or, that's yeah. that's the ambiguity here, right? Are we talking about? Oh, right. Does the light extend twenty feet high if it's from the ground and it goes? Up? I mean, oh. I guess it would, or is it? These are mounted twenty. The ones I'm referencing are mounted twenty mm -hmm. feet high. They are shielded, but they're shining down. And they're high you know, up. And by the time you get down to you know, 20 feet, the spectrum gets pretty wide at the bottom of that. Is that an actual, um, is that an ornamental light? No, I think Same it's, security. I would say it's a floodlight. You know, it's not ornamental. They, okay. If you, are you getting the mailings from all these outdoor lighting companies that are hitting up? Well, the yeah, neighbors? there's, there's ornamental decorative landscape lighting, yeah. but then there's a floodlight that is used for a purpose other than decoration. Yeah. It's it's illuminating the facade and the yards. So this one neighbor off of Mountain, uh, right. new house has probably eight of them them in their yards up on oak trees, shining down like it's an O'Hare land. In a way that in a way that's better than them shining up. It, well, and if they're twenty feet shining up, then no, I mean maybe if they're if they're, if they're a foot off the ground and they're shining up. Yeah, it's worse. and you think there's a. Carnival in town. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I get it. No, absolutely. It is. Uh, it yeah. is. You know, at least. It, yeah, I think. But but I just wonder if there's. And, and the second part of that is I really have an issue with people cabling wires on trees. Yeah. To hang lights. So we need to we need to be careful to cover this under non structures because if it's in a tree, it's considered ornamental or landscape. Yeah. So um, we have yeah. a section for that. So maybe we could tighten that up and say if it's ornament if it's on a tree, then it's ornamental. And that then is a different. You know, that's old school. Light. When I was a kid, we had security lights in the tree. Yeah, because it's a high. It's a, a nice high point, but it's yeah. it's just a lot of people have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just disrespectful, I think, to the living thing to be putting a light on it, and then it it is so broad when it shines down. Right. Um, well, we I know that with strings of lights, but with with the ornamental. Uh, you see that we do have limitations on the lumens, so we are starting to cover that. We're tightening it up. Okay. Could that be put into tree ordinance somehow? That you don't, you know, nail lights into trees? Uh, that could be a, a, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm not an expert in that. Mm -hmm. But we could bring it up with the village because the tree ordinance right now is not under our purview. I don't believe. Hmm. It's, yeah. it's um, hmm. but it could be a recommendation. Need to know if that could um, make a tree more vulnerable to right. disease, disease or something. Well, I think there's, I think there's the limiting. The lumens, which we're starting to do, and mm -hmm. we can 100 lumens is not very much for ornamental lighting. Right. The second issue is controls. Yes. Okay, and we're going to get into that. Yeah. So let's let's but, keep. But I'm just wondering, Brian, if we need to maybe define then if on this here, um, the 20 the feet. 20 feet is not for uh, ornamental or or string lights or landscape lights. Yeah, it's a structure. Yeah, it's yeah. it's on the structure. That's so fine. So I made a something. note. Her um, under maximum luminaire emissions and then fully shielded for fully shielded and then I put building mounted luminaires mm -hmm. and then okay. it goes into that. I think that would okay. cover what okay. we're talking okay. about. Okay. And then we also have architectural facade lighting, yeah. which we'll get into. And, in I, and I, I certainly don't want to single out any one or few few neighbors, but you start to see. Um, and I've gotten probably three of these, you know, shiny placards in our mailbox to the resident at our address from these exterior landscape lighting companies now. And they're, you know, people get them and they're like, oh, that's what such and such did. It lights up their whole house. It looks so good. It's cheap because of, you know, LEDs and all this now. So we should do that. And pretty soon two more neighbors have it. Yeah. Well, what um, we, we can consider doing, because this goes into the whole retrofit, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I, I, want, I think we should be careful about issuing an ordinance, which is going to make everyone go around town pulling down their lights off the huh. trees that they have. However, 
I think we can look at regulating landscape uh, installations and new installations um, with some sort of regulations. I, I'm thinking about the yeah. way that um, the landscapers had to comply with the the, the leaf blower, right. Right? right? Right. And if if there is a regulation that is um, implemented and handed out to most of the major lighting landscape companies in town, then we can get some compliance with new yeah. or make it make landscape lighting a permittable yeah. a permit required. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'll, that's a I'll, great idea. I'll come back to that, but because my other issue I would have brought up was, I think ten years of grandfathering is way too long for this. yeah well let's let's get to that we'll again to that. i mean that's 10 years people will be like well we'll get to it yeah we'll, get to it. well put it put it this way the the lifespan of an led light is 10 years max they're cheap and we're just saying pretty much turn them off is really what we're trying to say right. turn them off yeah not the, a lot of expense yeah the controls are easy yeah so but you know just going just a couple things and i know we'll get to this but Everything we talk about always boils down to public education and translating some of this into layman's terms, if you will. That's mm -hmm. part of public education. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the other thing that we're also kind of indirectly talking about is uh, compliance, you know, permitting. And what do you do if you have a neighbor that does this and you know it's not on the new lighting ordinance? How do you... You know, how do we approach that? Well, if your neighbor put a garage up without a permit, would you notify the village? I notify the village about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I am. The village notifies you about everything. <laughs> I'm the narc on the street, yeah. So I, I think there's, there's some, some acceptable compliance mechanisms for things like that where mm -hmm. if all of a sudden after an ordinance is passed, someone goes and does something, you know, against building ordinances, that's 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 a fair question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you go back, well, I didn't get a permit. Well, you need a permit. And you go back to the permit, and you can't do this, you can't do that. It, it becomes a, a, a re, not a retroactive per se, but when things appear, structures or systems on a building, it should have been permitted. Right. You know, the other thing I wanted to comment to, referring to landscapers and the leaf blower ordinance, they're the ones, I think, that in the end really enforce the the ban because a homeowner can say i want you to do this 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 and this and in the past they would say okay and now they say no we can't we got yeah i got to get a permit i got to get a permit and we i really can't do that for you right or i can do it but you're going to need controls and this is the type of light you can mm -hmm. use yes and i'll have it shut off at you know x amount of time and you know it, so it's not that you can't have ornamental we're not banning ornamental lighting we're mm -hmm. just changing the quality and, and the use of it in a way that m minimizes it you know we're not going to a complete zero light in lake bluff after yes. you know right. sundown right but it, there, there can be lower it significantly and then control it after off after a time so maybe that's an opportunity instead of only public education that we have education of the right vendors right and again we the leaf blower thing went pretty well i think oh it did in terms of you know People were like, oh, we're going to haul people in for the <laughs> using leaf blowers. And it, it really worked out well. All right, where were we? <sighs> okay. Um, color temperature, we talked about the, um, the specification for color temperature. Uh, the consultant is saying 3,000 degree cal Kelvin. It's just 3,000 K is what they normally refer to when you go to buy a light fixture. Um, uh, in terms of the of the light output, so uh, that's what their the current um, general standard. I know that he mentioned there was a lot of research on what animals see as light color versus yeah. what we see as light color. But I think three thousand K right now is the accepted standard, and that's also something we understand with any ordinance we do, whether it's the bees or the chickens or the or the leaf blowers, that, that this is not this is going to be updated regularly based on the science, mm -hmm. so. What is the conventional sort of review? Is it three years or five years or annually? Or <laughs> <laughs> I think um, the leaf blower ordinance was two, I think. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think two well, to three. I guess I meant more about lighting. You know, lighting's very science. Uh, oh yeah, in terms of new fixtures and new, mm -hmm. I mean, I would say, I would say every 
two to three years, there's new information on studies. I mean, there's a lot of research on lighting, so. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's something that should be incorporated in, you know, like a last point, this will be reviewed by the committee. Yeah, I forget, we had something so in less the, than yeah, we had something in the blower ordinance about, leaf blower ordinance about when it was gonna be reviewed, so we could add that. Yeah, and that was um, specifically because the leaf blower ordinance was kind of viewed as um, like almost like a pilot program right. yeah, like that would be reevaluated after sure. two years. So that might <clears throat> right. be an approach to take with something like that. Yeah, this we did it well. with the same with the chickens, right? after We loosened up some of the stuff because, you know. Mm -hmm. Some wasn't. of that, though, is waiting for the community to sort of sure. figure it out and what are the implications. But this is more sort of science, technology-based mm -hmm. updates mm -hmm. as well. But, yeah, I think if two to three sounds right. Um, here we get into the architectural facade lighting. Um, upward aim uh, lights are subject to the lumen and output restrictions and that are not fully shielded. However, um, upward aim lights will be fully shielded, fully confined from projecting into the sky above eaves. Now this is on architectural uh, uh, overhangs and we've mounted flush to uh, as possible. Um, I think we have uh, the controls are later on, but um, uh, downward uh, aimed is easier to be fully shielded and mounted as flush to the wall as possible and no reflective surfaces. So I think where someone is um, uplighting a, a structure, the point here is all that light is falling on the structure and not passing by the roof and ending up into the sky. But this is mounted on a facade, so it's on yeah. a facade lighting up. Right. So it's not like where people have in their right, right, landscaping and correct. it's going up to the house. Okay. Um, prohibited um, distracting lights. Mm. And again, this would be exempt from holiday because uh, otherwise Halloween would be boring if it wasn't flickering and flashing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, do we need to add some language in the prohibit, like no permanent luminaire maybe installed? Or... Say that again? On my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, under prohibited luminaries, we're saying no luminaire may be installed. And the implied is well, on A, flickers, flashes, blinks, scrolls, rotates, could be holiday lights. Right, but could be, so, so we're not kind of providing that discrepancy between thought, the holiday. But the, and the we e, e exempts, it. Exempts it's, it. it's exempted. Holiday lighting is exempted yeah. okay. from, yeah. from all of this. Yeah. Okay. Under, under the next section there, I think it's good. Um, upward aiming lights aimed 90 degrees, except as otherwise permitted herein. This is where you talked about where it's just kind of sitting in the ground and shooting up. Lasers, no lasers. Yep, I agree. Laser light, laser light shows, although again, holidays Holiday. is exempt. Right. Yeah. Um, exempt um, regulatory lighting, yeah. Anything that's required by the state, federal agencies, roadway lighting, security. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Temporary lights, obviously emergency repair, people working on a, a something, their house was damaged, the roads being fixed, that kind of stuff. Um, right away lighting, uh, right. Um, underwater illumination, swimming pools, yeah, we don't want swim, people swimming in dark pools. Thanks. Um, good here, except when there's. Any lighting used to pass similar out to must be controlled using timers and may not be upward facing. Great. So what about? Wait, we're saying those are exempt. Now, what is that? Why is that under here? Um, exempt luminaires. Uh, any lighting. C D E. Similar. Any lighting. And then we're saying ornamental lighting as well. Any lighting. And then strings of lights. Lighting must be controlled and may not be upward facing. So if someone had the little, the little string lights that illuminate the sidewalk in the back garden mm -hmm. area. I think that's what they're trying to say. Those are downward facing, um, something on the ground, because of what they're specifically saying may not be upward. So it's exempt, yes. but not upward. So it's a little confusing, right? Mm -hmm. I think landscape lighting is <laughs> the ambiguity. And then it, it, it must be controlled. It's reworded a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or just struck. I think we could strike E and F. I think we could potentially, I don't know. 
Well, the seasonal kind of covers holiday in I general. I seasonal, actually. But we've already said they're exempt from this. So we're yeah, but when, it, when is the holiday? Is but it the exact day of Christmas, or is it we're, we're giving it a, a range? Okay. Yeah. This yeah. doesn't include Halloween, but, though, to your point. Yeah. But oh, Halloween, that's a good point. Right? Yep. Yeah. What, so if I, what if I forget to take down my Halloween decorations <laughs> and I go through Christmas? <laughs> I think it's more the Christmas ones go through. Yeah. Yes. But Valentine's through, through Day. Easter. But, yeah. Yeah. So where, where, does, um, where does it fall where people have it in their gardens and it's projecting on their house, you know, sort of lighting up their house? <laughs> that would be landscape lighting and it is not allowed to shoot upwards. But so, like, what does upwards mean? Because it's not shooting, like, into the sky. It's shooting onto the house. But it's from yeah. the ground at an upward angle. Right. right. It is at the ground at an upward angle. So does that mean it's okay on timers? Or does that mean... <coughs> it, anyway, like, I, yeah. I, I don't quite know. Yeah, where I think th there's some ambiguity there. We could tighten this up. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, maybe you live next door to someone who does that. And their light shines into your home. And I know that's addressed here, but it might fit under that category as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be one scenario. I'm not quite sure where it fits in here. Okay. So. Let us think about that. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. ornamental lighting could be combined with landscape lighting, strings of lights, and maybe expanded upon in terms of how we're defining that, what we mean by that. And, I mean, if we're saying it's all exempt, like all of this is under exempt stuff, so part of me is like, well, what lights are we talking about? <laughs> if it meets certain requirements, it would be considered. I mean, at this point, it's almost like, what are the non-exempt luminaries? Because we're saying pretty much everything is exempt. And should the string of lights talk about the little caps on? I mean, obviously not the little, little ones, but if you have... Um, larger ones like we did out here we put the little caps on them mm -hmm. yeah we say that it, it may it may not you know illuminating pathways but it may not be upward facing but if you've got a little uh, round globe without the cap it is kind of upward facing a little bit right mm -hmm. so it could be kind of confusing there so let us think about that definition mm -hmm. uh, basically we know what they are they're the simple string lights that a lot of people have, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, for sure, this requires, it has to have a timer, right? So, okay, we'll go back and look at that some more. <coughs> um, okay, here's the lighting controls. So outdoor, we talked about whether to reproduce all of the lighting control standards in here or to simply refer them to the village uh, ordinance about lighting controls. So basically, outdoor lighting control should conform to the village's latest adopted version of the International Energy Code with Illinois amendments. Basically, um, what we should probably do at the next meeting is give you guys a summary of yes. what that is so you yes. can have that. Um, I, we're not going to be able to modify it, but it is fairly strict um, on outdoor lighting controls. Well, that's good. And it is a, like a one-page document that has been presented in previous packages i think it was referenced as a link possibly okay um yeah and, and we'll just review that. that the next meeting we'll just spend you know, 20 minutes going over that standard mm -hmm. and why is this in the exempt luminaries section lighting controls Yeah, you're right. It shouldn't be in here. No. Mm -hmm. I think it was, instead of being I, it was supposed to be... Um, F? F? Yeah. That's... And there's... Yeah, under yeah, H isn't following the standard that we've set in the outline that we have on like for instance the previous page they're jumping like h is going straight to i i i and then one two three whereas previous we're going a b c d uh, i think we should probably instead of going capital b capital c lowercase a b c potentially yeah. switch to that format just so it is standard that's mm -hmm. the copy editor in me it's good 
Okay, so the next one, rather than focusing on individual lights and controls, started talking about a cap on the site itself. Because let's say we, the limit was 100 lumens, right? But they put 10,000 <laughs> or 20,000 100 lumen mm -hmm. light fixtures on their property. There's, so we started basically, uh, these were, I'm not an expert in these, but these started from our consultant started uh, talking about the developed lumens per right. acre. That's interesting. Hmm. Huh. That's smart. So how would we be able, like, how would I be able as a neighbor to measure this? Would I be able to call someone in the village and be like, will you please come rate the lumens of Is this property next door? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? I don't know the answer to that question. And we definitely don't want to invest in a lot of photo, photo um, lumen meters and have the village you know, run around at night when they get phone calls late at night or the mm -hmm. police checking on that. Um, I think this is, it definitely is something with regards to anything that comes in for a permit. Let's say there's a new upgrade to all the parking lot lights or a new home being constructed or an addition or a permitted landscape lighting. I think that um, in those cases, uh, when we get submittals to the to the architectural board or the planning board or whatever, mm -hmm. there are they are now submitting the lighting plan with the lighting calcs and the total lighting lumens in it. Mm -hmm. oh, so I think crazy. I think that's where you're going to be able where, to see it. Okay. Right, so. I'm um, wondering maybe this maybe this falls more into the education than into the actual ordinance, but you know we talk about maximum, you know, being ten thousand lumens and. How do you measure that? And I just wonder if there's more of a qualitative statement that could be put in to say, you know, the objective of this is to try and minimize the amount of lights that you need to satisfy your security and by using timers, but, you know, and, and to respect the dark sky and all those things that are dependent upon it and to be respectful of your neighbors as you would with any other kind of pollution noise pollution mm -hmm. so if someone's running their you know blasting music at 10 o'clock till or 12 o'clock at night i could call the police and say that's too loud they're not going to go out there with a sound meter i don't think but they're going to go out and say you got to right. turn that down well i think i think turning off the lights at what it is let's say 10 p.m or yeah. 11 p.m yeah it's fairly straightforward the lights are off everybody's lights are off mm -hmm. i mean who's installed new stuff, we're not going back and making people putting controls on existing stuff. But I think there is a, a, a threshold limit there, just like the music. Right? It has to be off by a certain, mm -hmm. right. at a certain hour. Yeah. Right, and with regards to the security, we have to be very careful there, and we can talk about it now, is that what, what someone deems as a security need is not necessarily a security need. Um, I think, again, there, um, there's data that we've seen so far. You would think, and I would think, if I didn't read the experts, that the more lights, the better for if you've got security concerns. If you're on the edge of a village or you're near some you know, business that may, might have people late at night, you want to have security. But I think statistically, and uh, the data is showing that there, it's not as simple as you want a lot of light for security. Does it d d deter crime? I think from what I have seen, that where you need security lighting, it should be on motion controls, mm -hmm. um, and it should still be controlled. So um, what I've seen um, from the Illinois Energy Code in particular was like in parking lots of schools and things like that, um, after a certain time it didn't go off, but it went down to like 50% of the value it was or 30% or of the mm -hmm. value it was, yeah. and had motion sensors that would take it back up from 30 to, to the full light output. So, Let's take a look at that and that when we review the lighting controls for okay. security okay. in the Illinois Energy Code. Um, okay, so then we kind of, uh, what do we got here? General okay, uh, light trespass, we're talking about that. When we get the photometric studies for say, um, uh, a project in town, like the library, mm -hmm. or we get a project on you, we do get photometrics that show the foot candles around the building and then the foot candles at the property boundary. 
and you want that to drop right off at the property boundary mm -hmm. to almost nothing. So we talk about minimize trespass into rights of way into other properties. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> light source shall not be visible at the property line in which their luminaire is located. Um, non-residential, okay, they, for adjacent non-residential users, it's one foot candle. And again, these are recommendations from any property line abutting a residential lot. It's down to 0.5 foot candles, which is pretty low. But so is number one is suggesting if my neighbor's house is all lit up and it's lighting up my yard, that's yes. a problem. Yes. Okay. Um, for number two, does that include like um, parking light, lamppost things as well? Yeah. Good. So then in terms of here we get into the what I was talking about in terms of applications mm -hmm. for new projects, including new outdoor lighting. Um, we have a process indicated here where what they have to submit to the village, mm -hmm. including um, photometric plans, schedule of luminaires, basically a complete set of lighting plans. You can sure. do those total calculations and see uh, that plus the lighting controls, which I think is great. <coughs> and so is this a village permit? Would the builder go to the village just like they get a building permit? Yes. They would go and the village yes. would say, well, we need your lighting permit. Right. We need to see that, approve it, right. inspect it. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a fee. That cost is another yeah. question I have about all this because getting permits is really expensive. I know I'm doing a kitchen renovation. <laughs> you know we're doing lots of stuff. Yeah, the, uh, the current uh, permit cost, I think, is 3% yes. of construction costs. Yes. Which is significant. It's, it's a notable cost. I mean, but... Uh, that's a village question, and I remember when I was on the board, I, I mentioned questions like, well, if someone submits a, a, a building project that is LEED certified, can we like cut the permit cost in half? Like, if this is cheese LEED silver, we, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and at the time they didn't want to do that. Mm, that's um, too bad. You know, it's kind of a carrot approach. Yeah. But this idea. is fairly strict, so I mean, you're going to come in, it doesn't matter whether you're LEED or not, this is enforcing kind of a, a sustainable. Um, but yeah, I mean, all so that stuff is... So the builders will, kn will know this too. Yes. So we've, we've had applications, particularly on the commercial end and the government end, where someone's redoing the lighting on the parking lots and mm -hmm. they have to come in for a permit just for that. The school, yeah. uh, the middle school did all their light, parking lot lighting. They had to come in for that parking lot and lighting. So... What about the elementary school? <laughs> yes, they did. They're the highest... I mean, they're, the biggest, no, they're the biggest light polluter in all of West Lake Bluff. Except for the security lighting, all lighting, parking lot lighting, is to lead silver, low emission lighting. Mm. Uh, the the calls were submitted because mm. that's a lead silver certified elementary school. Mm -hmm. Now anything, but there's still like massive light emission from that property. Like I think they have something like all night, forty eight exterior lights alone all night. Very so, bright, right there. no reduction. They even leave the gym lights on, which illuminates the whole like window to the gym. Right. Leaves at, everything at, at the out. time that yes. that was right installed, there. the lighting control standards were not what they were now. Mm -hmm. They are. I mean, they're easily. And then I look at, for instance, the golf course building. There's one exterior light out there. You know, and it's the same with the parking lot. It's super low. There's not a lot. But I mean, the the elementary school alone they've got something like 22 lights in their parking lot right. just in their parking lot not to mention their exterior security i know their light. parking lot lights are zero cut off they do not go up to the sky no they do not go up to the sky but they still emit light which is reflected off of the ground right. for instance you know like <laughs> light light isn't um, it or, bounces. Yeah, it's on the direction it's not a particle or it's both a particle and a wave right oh. <laughs> yeah so a lot of this targets lighting the surface and the standards here do talk about what the total lighting lumen. So this is a much stricter if it had been done under this. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I mean, it was almost, what, 10, 12, 15 years ago that mm -hmm. I was on the committee that was looking at that. 
and they had to comply with all the latest lighting standards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if additional changes have taken place, but... If even, any changes were to take place, then they would have to abide yes. by the new... Yes. Well, we're going to have to decide what that threshold is. Right. Okay? If they're changing out a bathroom, you know, or... Right, right, right. You know, what a, you know is a school going to do, you know... $20,000 worth of exterior lighting work just to meet this... Right. Yeah. So... However, they might get to a point where they're retrofitting all the light fixtures because they've passed a useful life, in which case they do have to come yeah. and do this. Because if they're going to replace them or upgrade them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lighting controls would be the easiest, right? Yeah. So, and we did get lighting controls in the middle school for that half at a certain time of night. Yeah, it's terrible. But that was voluntary. Thank Our you. whole backyard is completely illuminated at night. That's terrible. The other thing the village has the ability to do is when they when they come in for uh, variations, like, oh, we're not doing a big project, but we want to move the, the something to here from there to here, and that's not for your standards. We need a variation approval. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you can get it if mm -hmm. you change those lights. Mm -hmm. So there's there sometimes can be some horse trading going on. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Deviation authority is that where we're at? Yeah. Is it also the case that street lights can be, you know, 30% or something at night, then maybe when a car goes through, they light up or are I think, those steady all the time? I, I think in general, transportation is steady all the time. Um, their safety things are state, state Illinois transportation mm -hmm. regulations. Because we did get some complaints from some residents that yeah. the street lighting was yeah. bothersome. Residents can petition to have street lights removed, though, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have to go before the board to do that? Or who do they, how do they, how do I think process? if it's a state agency, the village has no. If it's a state roadway or state or a ComEd, mm -hmm. uh, they have to go through them. But if it's a village-owned lights, I think the village only owns a certain, a very small amount of lights. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say. Like downtown, some of the ornamental old lights. Mm -hmm. It's ComEd everywhere, really. Yeah. And ComEd won't it's do that. It's ComEd as opposed to yeah. IDOT? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But some of those things, it's, it's, I think if the, I think if the village was to approach ComEd and say, we'd like to reduce the lumen output and the color of the streetlights in our village, it's probably as simple as changing the bulbs. But that's a, that's labor, that's buying the new bulbs, that's getting the proper technicians and equipment up there. That's, it's, though it sounds like a small act it's a significant investment because but if they had but to replace could, them at yeah. some point. You it know, could be that if you put the request in, then the as they have in. to yeah. change yeah. them, then they change mm -hmm. them to those standards. Some neighborhood in. kids break them with rocks or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's very hard dealing with combat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember way back when we had a lot of power outages in town, and uh, this was when Christine was part of mm -hmm. the village president, and I was on the board with her. And we were trying to get ComEd to come out and fix the reliability, particularly on the east side. There was a lot of outages at the time in power. And they kept, like, we don't want to talk to you. We don't want to talk to you. And then they came to us and they said, we want to build a substation <laughs> out on 176. And we need, because it's your land, we need your permit to do it. And it was a substation that was serving other parts of mm -hmm. Illinois, like it was needed as part mm -hmm. of their capital improvements. We said, man. Eh. We'd like to talk to you about the power upgrades <laughs> in the village. And all of a sudden, the vice president shows up. Anyway, story. Yeah. Good story. <laughs> That's a good story. We got the attention to make the improvements we needed in town. But um, Joint approval site plan deviations may be granted. Implementing a strict standards of this chapter do not require a finding of hardship. Okay, this is kind of a standard uh, language that we have in all of our permits and building where people can come in and apply and you have to find a hardship and the village board has to grant those mm -hmm. deviations it's not us but it has to go through a process right that's what we're talking about here <coughs> um general conference so special circle okay so all this language here is really kind of the language that 
some of it that we use in any mm -hmm. variation from a permit, including historical features and things like that. So the deviation authority just says we have the authority to make deviations based on meet. based on some of this criteria, right? right. Mm -hmm. criteria. Yep. But it doesn't mean we grant it. It just means these are some of the things you may yeah. appeal to Consider. us. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now let's get into the grandfathering, mm -hmm. amortization, yeah. the, the t t trickier part of this. Mm -hmm. Um. So it says here, this section is intended to gradually eliminate inappropriate and substandard lighting practices throughout the village in a manner that minimizes unnecessary costs to the property owners and realize uh, reasonable value from the existing light systems. So um, we had 10 years and this was something we wanna talk about. Obviously, we have some residents here. Sometimes we have older residents who may have retired. And I think that we were trying to set a date and a time that wasn't unreasonable to people to get into compliance. So I appreciate your... I know we like to say tomorrow. <laughs> but, yeah. ten, but 10 years, and again, I think, first of all, building and we It's not like we have... We're going to have a massive building boom in this village right. there's not a lot of open residential building opportunities so to expect that people are going to that we're going to have all these changes with new residential or massive additions well we'd have we'd have renovations we no, we do or for a sure small a small addition or an upstairs addition for, for yeah. sure we do but but if you were to look at the village as a whole that's 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 not going to transition us to a so to a an impactful way fast enough i think and i think if you put 10 years out there if i'm a homeowner i got all my lights up and i'm 10 years i'm not even looking at this thing until i get to nine years i'm not even thinking about this it's it's like the leaf blowers we did a pretty good job of saying we're going to give you some time here's a notice we're going to put some frameworks on it you know may to september or whatever it is and then we're going to maybe revisit this and transition it to a, a full-out band. And people were like, okay, I'll, I'll get with the program because they saw the value of quietness. Mm -hmm. And now we've got some letters from presidents who are saying, could we just go and get it all the year, right, right away? So I, I, I personally just think 10 years, you throw 10 years out there, everyone's going to look at this and say, we're all going to be gone in 10 years from this board, yeah. this committee. They're maybe moved by then. They're not going to think about making any changes unless they're already activated. And, but and what the did, ordinance what, what, doesn't really do anything. Like we, we should just we, do education. When we did the leaf blow ordinance, it was primarily targeted towards contractors. Right. There was a lot of debate on whether we were going to storm John's house and take his gas powered gas leaf blower because he does it himself yeah right <laughs> and that was a no-no right right so you know when you talk about hardship we are talking in this particular instance we're going to regulate landscapers and and those agencies but I, i'm just saying as as a village we've always been treaded lightly like with historical I, I ordinances I yeah. of going I in and saying okay this is your property too bad yeah. you know we're going to change this yeah so i think this is a very and we're not going to resolve this tonight, but I think this is a very difficult subject sure. in, in existing it, it grand flower where someone has lights and they're still working this way. When do we go in and force someone to to pull those lights? Right. You know, the other thing, it's it's one sentence. It's 10, 10 years. But there are so many restrictions in this. There are so many new things. But when you see you have 10 years, then people say, all oh, right, well, that I guess I could live with that. It changes the mindset of, okay, well, I guess that's fair. Instead of, you can't do this, you can't do that. It's gotta go up, it's gotta go down, it's only this. It's overwhelming, and then, oh, well, okay. It's just a nice number to catch, to their, breath. catch their breath, to get them to comply. And the other thing is, you know, lighting, more than almost anything else, changes all the time. There's such new technology lights are like this big now and do that i mean so who knows what things are going to be like in 10 years right and this will be revisited long before 10 years from yeah, no, when I, this I understand it but there's simple things that could be done that are not cost that do not affect the cost like turning off your lights at night um 
Yeah, turning some of them off. I mean, unplug some of them that are outside. That's not a cost. Okay. So I think we're talking about a number of different things here. Mm -hmm. and, and I just want to try and clarify. Right now we're talking about grandfathering non-conforming lighting in, right. which means existing structures that have lighting systems that violate the terms that we're setting forth now mm -hmm. have 10 years to make the investment, which can be a very significant investment for a lot of people, mm -hmm. not like a $300 leaf blower. It could be right. a $10,000 lighting system um, that they need to bring those up to code within the next 10 years with the idea that those will be woefully out of date in 10 years time. Right. right. Exactly. The other issue I think we're talking about is the 10 years feels a little bit toothless when it comes to citizens who are having real issues with exterior lighting, maybe not from new construction, but from existing lighting systems from their neighbors, right? Not, not people who are applying for permits. We're saying the ordinance here, once it is accepted for all new construction, will have to abide by these codes, right? right? The codes that we put forth, any new construction is going to have to abide by these right. things that we put forth. Not in 10 years time, immediately. Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. for the non-conformant, the ones who don't have it now, I think 10 years is a very long time. I agree with you. And it feels a little bit toothless, but it's also for existing structures. Right. I like the idea of seven years. Feels like it's also enough time. Feels like it's also enough breath, knowing that all new projects, new construction, new whatever, is going to be held to the standards that we're putting forth in this document. And so I'd like to propose potentially. I could, I could live with seven. Mm -hmm. I was also thinking about the idea of you know, in terms of what what the cost is, lighting controls are relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just spitballing here. What if it was five years to get controls compliant and ten years or seven years to get fixture compliant? Mm. Oh, I like That's that. That's a good I like idea. That. I like That's that. That's also reasonable. I think right. It's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because controls are easy. I mean, it could be. Yeah. You could just comply by doing it manually, but yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, and automatic lighting controls are getting cheaper and cheaper and yes. cheaper. Especially in outdoor lighting, you just plug the outlet into a little control box and plug the other one back into the string, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like with, I do that with my holiday lights because yes. I, I don't want to remember yeah. to go out. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Mm -hmm. it's cheap. I have a remote control for them. It's yes. great. Somebody keeps Except it. I lose the remote control. <laughs> I, uh, I dig out the lights. I'm like, I can't yeah. find a remote. You just have timers. <laughs> yes. I, I like the I, I like the seven years. I think that still has feels like it's a nice grace period. Seven years. Um, and I, but I also like the the idea of timers. The shorter I like time that time. five and seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. You like that? Yeah. Okay. I like the distinction. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, good, good recommendation. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, if people do have stuff that's not fixtures and it's bleeding into other people's yards, that could be a drug, you know, this is really about changing fixtures and stuff, right? It's right. about the hard cost. Right. I, I mean, a lot of it is, I mean, our house is three years old now. And if I had to reduce my lighting, it would be probably changing light bulbs. <laughs> You know, and I mean, I mean, it's not something that I would, you know, really consider. I have a neighbor who had a uh, his garage lighting was very bright and white, and uh, another neighbor mentioned to it. He's like, "Oh, I didn't realize that they changed the bulbs." It was like, you know, and that's maybe not. We don't need an ordinance for that. Maybe that's just the education and mm -hmm. right. and the things of you know consideration, consideration and yes. and awareness of mm -hmm. oh. You know, this is an impacting other people than just us. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that. Thanks, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Yeah. How many committee members does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> 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 little uh, public government that's joke for the people online. <laughs> I want to make sure that's in the minutes. <laughs> it could be in our philosophy statement. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Any member call last. You fill in the blank. <laughs> okay. Uh, so are we, let's see, 10-year date, fee adjustments, early adoption, incentive. 
discount shall apply wherever a property owner. So there's your permit discounts from 3%. That's nice. If you do it, if you do it early, mm. you can do an upgrade early. That's great. Okay. Um, loss of grandfather st status. And I think this is like, well, if you're moving, replacing, or upgrading the light fixtures, come on, you got to do it right when you do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and that includes nothing, uh, includes the lighting temperature as well. And there's a, mm -hmm. the 3,000 lumens, uh, or 3,000 K, sorry. Um, percentage there. So whenever more than 20% of the original luminaire counter site is replaced or proposed for replacement, it's got to be conforming. And then the major project threshold. Uh, renovation or addition to a building exceeding 25% of the assessed market value, which is pretty big in this town. Um, uh, you know, that'd be like a major addition to the house. Uh, mm -hmm. You've got to change all the lighting. Um, question is, is it 20, yeah, 25%, could it be 20? Uh, you know, yeah, maybe. Um, I don't think it should be 10, but. No. Um, I think 25 is good. It's, I okay. mean, up door, updating an entire exterior lighting system, again, is not an sure. insignificant cost, so. Okay. All right. Any other comments on this section mm -mm. okay um, looks like they've got some factors for extension if you want to go beyond that and hardship and all the other stuff hardship. Um, well you know if you're a senior on a fixed budget that may sure. be a hardship mm, you know okay sure. widower you know living on whatever we want to be fair to people um, have a certain day okay so this is all just you know legalese on the, on the exemptions Mm -hmm. So um, the stuff in red is, I think, stuff we didn't know what to do with, so we put it at the end here. Yeah. We hadn't developed too much. Um, uh, we did actually find the original um, light zone ordinance uh, or light, proposed light zones, which is not on this attachment, but it's in our packet, yeah, I believe, in the packet, I think. where we had defined... Um, you know, where residential was, where the parks were, because that affects the amount of lighting that you can use. So mm -hmm. that was included. Um, it's a first step. Um, if I, I can't remember if I looked down there and I thought, were the beaches properly covered under the park? I can't remember if that was a, a miss. But otherwise, I thought it was a good start uh, because commercial would have a, a slightly higher allowance, obviously, than residential. Parks would have lower than residential mm -hmm. park areas. So... Um, this was in the map that we received? Yeah. Yeah. So take a look at that. If you have any further comments, send them on. And then the other one was a little trickier because I know there's lots of kids. Yeah. Uh, baseball, there's pickleball, there's all this, all this sports stuff. Paddle tennis. Paddle tennis, yeah. So um, I don't know, give your thoughts on whether we're really going to control that kind of lighting other than it should be on when you need it and off when you don't need it. Strict curfew, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just so that it's not going <clears throat> up, right? Just so that it's all down. Yeah. I mean, I don't want anyone, the kids playing baseball and it goes to half level. <laughs> right. right. It's it should just kids. be. That's it's adults there. playing softball, <laughs> right? Yeah, true. Timers to prevent the lights from being accidentally overnight. Ice hockey too, right? Oh, yeah. In the winter, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. pond. So do you think we should include this section and try and make it? Okay. I do, yeah. Okay. There's enough sites in Lake Bluff where sport Okay. Was... It's relevant. Yeah. yeah. And just one uh, option that we could look at. I know you guys had said that a lot of things were being exempt, but maybe this is something similar where it's exempt but it has to meet certain requirements mm -hmm. some curfews and yeah whatnot. like the timer controls and um Lumens also the not up facing yeah something along those lines mm -hmm. uh, the next one was something we discussed a lot when i was on the board which is uh signs illuminated signs particularly in the commercial districts um at the time, there was a lot of uplit signs that stayed on all night in the commercial districts. Mm. Um, uh, signs. Uh, lighting up the name. Lighting up the name. Lighting up the and building. Not timers. Up the, um, yeah. um, 
so we have a sign code which is covered elsewhere mm -hmm. um, regulates illuminated signs um, provisions of the lighting code otherwise not followed best practice um, consider amending the sign code as needed to so maybe let's have a section where we, we we're going to bring in the uh, the lighting code why don't we bring up the side ordinance in our next meeting just spend some time on it do you, you or do you want to have a section that ref like where it's referencing these different things like where we were saying um the other illinois code that we didn't want to reproduce in here yeah um i don't know we have a section sort of how this document speaks to other right. uh controlling mm -hmm. policies yeah and i guess one question in this grand scheme of things is where these regulations if adopted live. live right and if that's in the zoning ordinance then the sign code is also in the zoning ordinance so both would be able to potentially okay. be amended and items could you guys could suggest to add into the sign code related to okay but i think it's a really good point to make sure there's consistency between between those yeah i i, I gotta admit i haven't looked at the sign code so maybe like I said we could have some time looking at that did the lighting um, consultant maybe he has recommendations around that I think this language was exactly what he said regarding oh, okay. that is that it would be good to examine the sign code alongside this process mm -hmm. yeah electronic displays are a pain Mm -hmm. uh, I hate driving along and seeing, you know, f flashing video and and other things, you know, scrolling. It's also distracting, especially at night when you're driving, because yes, yes. it catches your. I know it's supposed to catch your attention, but it shouldn't. But we have those existing examples, like Bluff, right? The Sunset Motel on Forty One has one of those. That's not village property. Yeah, that's it's not outside of. Oh, okay. Neither is the the. A lot of the anything north of 176 is not ours. Okay. Hmm. Uh, north and, uh, uh, sorry, west. You know, like that silo, that whole area there yeah. is not. That's not like the Bluff. gas stations. Oh. Not wow. like Bluff. Oh. What is it, North Chicago? Or no one. Un no. Unincorporated. 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 Wow. But so they're not subject to these, huh? No. That's interesting. There, there was a discussion way back in the day in the village board about ways to annex those properties to get them into. I remember that? Mm -hmm. Like even. Uh, and, and we just we couldn't make it happen. Hmm. So shit. But we get their tax revenue or no? No, we no. do not. Oh. Mm -mm. So when you shop local, seems like a missed opportunity. Yeah. When you shop local, know which side of one seventy six you're on. We don't have gas. Uh, we don't have gas stations there. No. Yeah. It's interesting. I go to Costco anyway, and Metawatt's cheap. <laughs> Um, and then um, begin. Okay, so this talks about how we're going to move forward once this is developed on the education. Yeah, and I think that's a big part of this. Mm -hmm. um, um, how we're going to do the materials, how we're going to roll this out. I think there's some we learned from the leaf blower ordinance, but there. But I think this is going to um, affect amnesty period of not one year. I think we did that as well with the leaf blower where we kind of, I don't know if it was a year, we did like, we weren't going to be tough is what I think we decided mm -hmm. right away. It was more like warnings and little stickers, mm -hmm. and, you yeah. know, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think there's going to, you need to look at this and let us know if you, if there's any language here you'd like to think about. Yeah. So I think we've gotten a long way with this ordinance. Yeah, yes, we really have. it's really exciting. I am, I'm excited about it too. But so to, to pull in the comments from, um, from the folks who submitted things. So one was about street lights that we have no control right. over. So we could say it's, we could respond just saying we, we don't have any jurisdiction. It's ComEd. And then we did get one comment about coach lights um, right. 
Oh coach. yeah, the the so, old yeah. timey ones in front of houses. Is that what? I don't know what a coach light. I just was sort of thinking of garage lights. I, I don't, but I d honestly don't know. But, but I figure as long out. as they're covered and facing down, it wasn't really a concern, right? It wasn't something we were particular gonna be. a particular neighborhood, wasn't it? Or something? I recall being in the West Terraces, and this was light. after eleven thirty, and every single garage light was on on every single house. And what I was thinking granted, about. Granted, they all like they all face down. They're all covered. They all meet that, but it was like the whole neighborhood was lit up because everybody had the garage light on. I was thinking uh, there were a number of the you know the black lamps with the big glass mm -hmm. in the front of people's lawns just mm. to weigh us down, but I haven't mm. seen those, a lot of those lights. I do have a neighbor who has something like that. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what I think they're talking about. Oh. Garage lighting is, it says right here, hold on one second, garage lights that are also sometimes referred to as coach lights. And that's what you were talking oh, okay. about. Okay. Well, the garage Basically, lights is a different issue. I think yeah, exterior wall lights can be positioned mounted, either side uh, of the garage. Fixtures, um, specifically related to residential. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which would not, I mean, as long as they're mounted on the building. And they're downward facing mm -hmm. and there's Covered no off light. And they're not um, and they're maximum, not, uh, yeah. maximum mm -hmm. lumen per, per fixture, I think it's compliant. There's not much we can do about it. But there is a lot of those just kind of old floodlights on some garages yeah. that just kind of shoot out more uh, horizontally mm -hmm. than down uh, and i'm sure that those lumens exceed the individual lumens per one of the things that i've always wanted to do is get everybody to turn off all of their lights on new moons right mm. to get stars so we could see more stars and even like potentially get the village involved where and the schools and everybody else where on nights of new moons there's an initiative organic grassroots it says, everybody turn off all your lights and see how many stars we can see. That's a sweet idea. This is something that would require massive amounts of communication and coordination across multiple... Signage. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody. And this is something that we've discussed about potentially having a signpost or much like the Park District does announcing their programs and their events like we have at 176, right. potentially putting something outside of Village Hall that announces these sort of initiatives that the village is trying to promote. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. You can have signs around, lights out, you know, June X state. Even just, you know, those, those like they have, the, the park district is really good about these. You know, they have them right outside the pool. Yeah. They have them at 176. There's also oh, yeah. another one where Sheridan Road turns mm -hmm. right at the border. Yeah. Um, if we could get one outside of the village that promotes not just SEC, initiatives but other village initiatives that are trying to get you know moved forward mm -hmm. whatever those might be i think they would go a very long way in communicating what's going on with this sure. committee and the village and all of that stuff i think this is something we brought up maybe two meetings ago or the last meeting was canceled so i think mm -hmm. i brought it up last meeting mm -hmm. um I think mm -hmm. there could be a lot of opportunity as well with whoever becomes our high school liaison if we specifically get someone who both has, um, you know, environmental interests, but also is part of that new media program yeah. to look at creating little videos, mm -hmm. you know, that could be used um, to get student support, student energy behind it mm -hmm. that could give, you know, fun stuff for the village to use on social media and mm -hmm. on its, you know, to complement what you're yeah. talking yeah. about. Be fun assignments for the class to do if they're looking for. Especially if they're short, right? Yeah. yeah. So Even maybe that. it's we invite the um, director of the new media program, you know. But on those new moons, I mean, it could be even the kids bring home little light bulbs, you know, cardboard cutouts with an X in it, and they bring it home to mom and dad and say, yeah. you know, tomorrow night is the lights out. Yeah, you something know, like night. that something could be yeah. cool. it would be nice if we as a village had a philosophy like you know if all things equal try to have your lights outside lights off by 10 or 11 or yeah. if it's mm -hmm. midnight um, I, I think one of the things too is as, as this goes into effect I think people will positively see oh half the street has gone out it mm -hmm. you know and then all of a sudden it's 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 happening around you and you become part of it you know there's a People follow, you know, what's going on. You know, that's happened on Arbor Drive. If you ever want to drive down Arbor Drive <laughs> past 11 o'clock, it is almost totally dark. Yeah. I mean, I it's just it. wonderful. And I don't even know how it happened, really. 
But you know, we always turn everything off because yeah. it feels safer to be in the dark, really, than to show everybody here I am. Mm -hmm. Right. So we always turn all the lights off. Look at all the stuff I have in my house. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, little by little, it's I mean it's just wonderful. Yeah, but it's word of mouth programs like that that help get it done. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, it's great. So we need about a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar marketing budget. budget. <laughs> budget. Yeah. Well, 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 once you get it, I, I work at an ad agency. We'll happily take it. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Pro bono project. Pro bono. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there's nothing else, um, let's uh, pick up those comments and circle back in the next meeting. Sounds good. Good. Cool. Good, good discussion. All right. Uh, next up is village staff report. Anything to update us on? Yeah. So we didn't have our official meeting last month. But we did have our presentation um, mm. regarding insects that was in that line was with the um, theme of the Bird City uh, or the Audubon Society's So theme that just the ran at our meeting time anyway? Yeah, yeah. just the presentation, but there mm -hmm. wasn't a, uh, the... Uh, sustainability committee wasn't up here to meet and discuss afterwards it just ran okay. is that recording available it is okay yeah it was a and good fun discussion on cicadas too yeah yeah it was interesting <laughs> cool. uh, but with that i just want to let you guys know that we have been named a bird city illinois hey. yes. and it was presented to us at our last village board meeting so that's terrific awesome. yeah. thank you congrats Hey. Is there a dark skies city USA? Like, would we qualify for that? There uh, is. There, there are. There. I think there are four in but the United I, States. I don't think we would qualify, right? I I uh, would I would strongly. We, watch, we are we are initiating dark sky principles and regulations, but to get a truly dark sky, I think let's circle back in ten years, yeah. seven years, seven, seven years, years. seven yeah. years, <laughs> right. And but, that, the, the second yeah. ordinance revision or third ordinance but revision. So, so with that, that is so great. I mean, so we're Bird City USA. I mean, it ties directly into a light, dark sky. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, that's Because part of we're it. trying to protect yeah. our birds. We're trying to protect the insects. Mm -hmm. And the Tree and, City USA. And the trees yeah. and everything. And so it's like if we, if we were to develop a marketing campaign and kind of talk about this holistic kind of, you know, what we're, what we're all focusing on. And it all ties together. The leaf blowers ties into oh, yeah. this. It does right? all so, tie together. It's all connected. Um, I think that's that's just going to be great to pipe that, and it'll help with the adoption of people's view of lighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And right. just what what is quality of life? Yeah. Right. And not just our lives, <laughs> not just humans. Okay. Um, other than that, the uh, just a village update, the Glen Avenue footbridge has been replaced and should be open to the public within the next few weeks with uh, some minor landscaping and um, other adjustments that are still being made. Cool. Cool. But Will yes. it be open by the 4th, do we know? I believe it should be open by the end of the month. Nice. Perfect. That's what I have. Claire, just a question. It's off topic a little bit, but I see that they're uh, we're doing some landscaping yeah. on the streets here with new curbs and planting beds. Yes. Um, that looks really good. I mean, I think it's going to be really cool. Is that going to be also ready by the fourth? That is. That's the, the target. Yeah, the target. This yeah. this weekend is the car show Saturday. Correct. Um, and so we're going to have. Uh, um, I'm on the committee for the car show, so just FYI, we will have uh, we have uh, peaked out on the maximum amount of cars we can have. Oh, great! So oh, usually, crazy. we have people showing up that day that want to just come and, mm -hmm. and show their car, but now we we pre-registered uh, a full field to fill every spot we could. So, how many cars is the that? Bank building. I don't know the exact number, Sophia, but I think it's close to 250, mm. or 275. Oh, wow. Um, so Do you guys have cars in the in the train parking lot too? In the metro lot? No, that's for public parking. But they'll be in the bank, the uh, vacant yeah. bank parking. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good spot. Yeah, 
Should we get a goal of 50% EVs next year? Would <laughs> <laughs> they be considered classic cars? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it, but anyway, um, the street, like I said, that looks good. What's going to happen? Right? That sounds yeah, good. great. All right, speaking of continuing that, any other member reports, items, news to share? Well, we know the plants going in are all natives. Yay. Are they? Yep. Yeah. I was great. afraid to ask. They're all natives, <laughs> which is great. That's awesome. And um, the Lake Bluff Garden Club is working with the village and Margot McMahon, who was the sculptor who created the dance sculpture mm. that used to be on mm. Anabasi Corner. And um, this is with Drew. This is with uh, Jody Mariano. And a site has been selected over by the train station. Oh. And a third draft of a plan is in place. And so that's very exciting. More native plants going in there. Awesome. So we've got a lot of good things going on. But um, one of the things I'd like to bring up, and I know we're, we're knocking down giants uh, you know, in this committee, but one of the things I would really like us to find time to talk about is the use of neonicotinoids residential use of that chemical because we can plant native plants, we can shut the lights off, we can you go to electric leaf blowers, but as soon as that is used, it negates everything Close because everything. it impacts the whole environment. And I'm not sure how we do it. I know it was one of the criteria to become a bird city. It wasn't one that we chose to use and we still got it, but you know, I'm going to do some more research. I'll, I'm really uh, committed to that because um, an important issue. it's real important. And uh, the plants <clears throat> that we get from Cleason's that we use in the village planters, they are neonicotinoid free. They went to biological control mm. of pests mm. for the plants that they, they uh, provide for us. So okay. I don't know where to go from here, but that's a, that's a big uh, hot button for mm. me. So I'm just going to keep looking at looking for things. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, chair report. Um, nothing to report at this point. I'm very happy with all the progress we've been making. I think it's really good stuff. And that's all I've got. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Um, or well, I, go I ahead. Had a question. So any other? Because we had more sort of citizen comments than usual. So anything else we should be addressing we got things about oh yeah you know implement the is the ban on the um gas powered mowers staying so i assume we're a yes, yes. and that um it's not going to be faster <laughs> it's going to we're going to stick to the regular right well, we're almost halfway through i think it was two years right mm -hmm. so yeah we are past the halfway mark and um so, i think next spring would be two years from when yep. it was passed. so it won't be that far away and we've already made good progress so i just want to make sure we respond do, do we sure. respond to those inquiries do we um it's up to you it's public comment so you're mm -hmm. welcome it to. just seems nice to i think it's good to respond to them here too it's a good point to bring them up yeah mm -hmm. yeah that we're listening and appreciative that people yes. share feedback. So, so along those lines, Sophie, I know that the, we did get the letter about the street lighting, and it's we can say it's a comment issue. Right. But could we, at least as a village, do anything more? Like, could we contact comment as a village and just post a thought to say, would could we could we get your ear on lowering the output of our street lights? Um, or timed controls on during high active versus low activity. Well, I think use. if there's a way to say to ComEd as, a, as a village, like we've implemented a new code, like we've adopted a new code, and as such, we hope that as you tran you know upgrade or transition, you'll right. comply with. Well, I think there's also too if you're looking at because you know we're an ad hoc committee, and then there's the village board which is elected. Yeah, but right. really, you 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 should be contacting your state representative, right? Because they're the ones that regulate ComEd and mm -hmm. are able to mm -hmm. affect change yeah. uh, statewide as a utility as a utility company. So, but that's a good point. I just think it would be nice if we respond to mm -hmm. them with whatever you know that's mm -hmm. governed by ComEd. You know, sure. Do you mean using... directly from a village email address? Yeah, we where, respond. wherever it came in from, just say, 
you know, the committee Dear so and so, we had a discussion. Comment and just FYI, that's a ComEd thing. Here's ComEd's number. And maybe mm -hmm. you'd want to consider talking to your state rep because, I don't know, just something so people sure. are, are heard. Just so it doesn't go unanswered. I mean, there's not a, well, I think a it's clear that the them. committee agrees with you. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. comment. It's, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and then um, what what's our process for getting a new student? Oh, she has, isn't, hasn't she identified some candidates? So at the last meeting, I believe she brought up that um, she was working with a teacher that recommended her t on that. Uh, we didn't have our meeting last month, and she's mm -hmm. not here tonight, so I'm not sure what progress will be made mm -hmm. on that. Uh, but I, she, I believe she said she's here through the summer. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Good. So hopefully we have more of an update on that soon. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. But maybe we should have a contact at the high school. I mean, I don't know. Should it be her job to have to find her replacement? I don't know. She's working I... with Drew on that. Okay. Okay, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Yep, second. Second. Sure. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Okay.